Hello YouTubers and welcome to Mud Max Metal Detecting. Right today we're going to be looking at these and we're going to be looking at these. So we'll start with this. This is an army smock. Now there's many different coats and jackets out there but this is the smock MTP multi-terrain pattern and this is the style that's now issued to the army. Uh, as you saw in the intro, you can get the old school darker camo, which Damon's got. Um, all the smocks are roughly the same. There are slight differences, but I'm going to review these and I'm going to show you why I think they are excellent if you go metal detecting. Okay, so this is the MTP multi-terrain pattern uh, jacket that is now given out to the armed forces. So why do I think this is so good for detectorists? Well, the first thing is pockets. This thing has got loads of pockets and they are big. I don't know about you, but the less bags I have to put on, the less bags I have to use, the happier I am. Uh, and really with this smock, you really don't need a lot of bags. In fact, I actually can put my pin pointer in this large lower pocket and it sits the whole pin pointer goes in the large lower pocket so i'll show you that in a little bit more detail in a moment let's have a look at the top pockets first though you've got two of these large chest pockets and they are big my whole hand goes in there you can easily get a fines box in there um, but i prefer to put my fines box in one of these two other huge pockets and these are map pockets so You've got one of these on each side. This is how far they go. I can scratch my armpit. They are absolutely huge. Now, I don't know if I'd want to put anything that big in these, and I don't know if I'd want anything to go that far under my arm because I don't want it to get in the way when I'm detecting. But the other day I had a fines box just inside there. It sat lovely just there, and I was able to get it out really easily. They zip up really good. They've got great zips on them. So you've got two large outer chest pockets. You've got two map pockets. And one thing that's different on the MTP, which you haven't got on the DPM, or at least Damon hasn't got it on the one that he's got anyway, is arm pockets. You've got one of these on each side with the MTP. Now, to be honest, these are brilliant in the DPM without the arm pockets. But quite handy if you want something like an antiseptic gel or a couple of plasters, something that you wouldn't have very often that's nice and easy just to put in there. If you cut yourself on something nasty and you just want to rip off the Velcro, grab something, wash your hands, grab a plaster, something like that really. Or even a spray bottle for spraying your fines or a toothbrush for cleaning them. You might want a few small bits and bobs on your arms, but personally, I think what I'll probably do is some antiseptic wipes or a tube of the gel uh, or some plasters, something very lightweight that I'm not going to use very often, but just stick it in there and know I've got it. If I have a little accident, I can just rip that open and grab something and deal with it in the field. These are designed for the army, so they're very practical. And as I say, the pockets are absolutely brilliant. Let me show you the large pocket. Let me show you how big it is and why you can actually use one of these without carrying a bag for your pinpointer in your trowel. And then after that, we'll talk about the smock a little bit more and what kind of sizes you should probably get. And also, I'll show you the hood because the hood is brilliant. Okay, so as promised, let's have a look at these big lower pockets. There's my pinpointer. And there it goes. If I angle it slightly, it disappears altogether. So I can literally put that over and that pinpointer is gone. So those lower pockets, if you don't like using bags or you want to get rid of some of your bags, you can do that. On this side, I've got a very long trowel. As you can see, that's not a small trowel um, and it just sticks out slightly. But I detected with that like that for five hours. It never fell out. Um, it just sat like that all day long. It wasn't a problem. And my junk went in there as well. That is bigger than most junk pouches. 
you can get a lot of junk in there. So if you are going to use this coat purely for metal detecting and cosmetically, you don't want to keep it clean. And why would you if you've been metal detecting in it? Then you can use that as a junk pouch. You could even put a bag inside it and then lift the bag out. I just put my junk straight in it. I don't care. I'll put a glove on and I'll take all the junk out and lighten the load when I go through it. But yep, yeah, junk pouch and trowel in one side, pin pointer in the other. And these buttons do vary as well. These are the ones with the over flap like that. Some of them, you won't have that and you'll actually see the buttons when they're done up. But you don't see the buttons on this one when they're done up. But the DPM is exactly the same on the lower pockets. Uh, most of the smocks have these huge lower pockets and you can just carry pin pointer and trowel and junk and things like that if you want to eradicate belts across the waist altogether. I found it worked absolutely perfectly in the field like that. So yeah, I may continue to do it like that. I may not, I'm not sure yet. Um, just a personal preference thing, but honestly, there was no problem doing that. So if you want to use your lower pockets for pointers, rubbish and trowels, they are plenty big enough and they do mean you have to wear less baggage. Now that's what I call a hood. Um, I wear glasses, that comes forward all the way. It's got wire, make sure you get one with wire. Some of the uh, army surplus ones have had the wire taken out. If they've had the wire taken out, uh, you're best off going for the wire. My friend at work is ex-army and he said, if you haven't got the wire, they flap about in the wind. So you can mold these, you can bend them back if you want. You can do them any way you like. But the great thing about them is, again, these are adjustable. So if you've got headphones on, you can get your headphones underneath this as well. But you've got this full tube coming right out. <clears throat> I find it best to wear a peak cap because that helps to hold it up, uh, helps to give it something to sit on. But if you've got a, a baseball cap on and if you've got your headphones under there, you will be able to get this over and you will, you, so long as you get the right size, obviously, you will be able to get this over. They're very roomy hoods. Um, look at this. I hope you can see that, but they go right up in the air like that. So there's loads of room. When I've got mine on, I just pull the excess down at the back. So I've tested this and I can get this over my headphones. And I'm talking large over the ear headphones as well. I can pull these in nice and tight. I can crimp this to any shape I want. So if I want to crimp it and make it even tighter, I can. But if I get a light shower, that's going to keep my glasses nice and dry and clean. So I'll give you a side on view. And I've still got really good vision as well. I can still look around, see what's going on, but that's gonna keep me nice and dry. As I said, this is a smock. They're not waterproof, but they will resist light showers, things like that. They will help you out in the field. So long as the rain is not torrential, they do offer you some cover, but these hoods, absolutely brilliant. Okay, let's quickly talk about sizes. Now, the smock is a windproof and showerproof overlayer. They're thin, they keep out the wind. Because they're an overlayer, they are made to take layers. So you don't have to get bigger sizes up. Now, I have, but I've got a bit of a belly and I wanted a really roomy one. I'm five foot eight and I'm a standard kind of chest size. And for me, 104, 170 is the NATO sizing. Check the NATO guide. It's easy to work it out once you get the hang of it. A lot of the army surplus stores will size these in the NATO sizing. But five for eight, standard build, you will get layers underneath in the cold weather in a 170 length, five for eight or thereabouts, and a 104 chest. But I've gone 112 by 180, which is length and breadth for someone about six foot. That means I've got very baggy arms on mine and I need the Velcro because it is built for someone taller, but I purposely want one that's longer and even roomier. And the beauty is if you do go bigger, you do have pull cords inside, you can drag the coat in. So that's why I did it but you don't need to, okay? Your standard size for the average person 
go for what you would normally buy your chest size. They do factor in size to put layers underneath them. So you don't have to go big to get layers. They're designed to take layers. So your size will be loose fitting and it will allow you to put layers in. But just for my personal preference, I've gone really big because I know I've got a draw cord. I can bring it in a little bit and I like my clothes to be really loose and long. It does mean the arms are quite baggy because this is designed for somebody taller than me. You don't have to do that, it's just my preference. So remember, they are sized to take layers. If I undo those strings, this thing is massive. I really don't need one this big, even with my tummy, but I've gone for it nonetheless. So they are designed to give you room for layers in your normal chest size. Okay, folks, so let's have a look at the shirt. Now, as you can probably gather by the fact that I've turned it back, yet again, I've gone for a size that's a lot bigger than I need. But that's because I like things baggy. The shirts also have good pockets. The MTP, the multi-terrain pattern, on this particular one I've got, also has the side pockets which I think is absolutely brilliant. And then it has two Velcro pockets here as well. So if I'm in the summer and I wanna travel light and I don't want a lot of stuff, I can still take the essentials in the shirt itself. It's Velcro and it's also zip up. So in the warmer weather, I can have it open. I can just have it with nothing else underneath actually and just have it done up like that. Now, obviously, it's not going to be very weather protecting because of what it is. Oh, by the way, if you can see that, it's not a pocket, okay? That's for insignia. So if you were uh, of, of a rank in the armed forces, you would put your insignia on there so people could see what rank you were. So they just put them on, take them off. I think that's why they have Velcro on there as well. Um, but yeah, that isn't another pocket. You've just got the two roomy ones there and the two on the arms. You have to make sure when you order these things, um, DPM, which is the old camo, I don't think they have those pockets on the arms. They're still great shirts though. They've still got all these other pockets. Just check very carefully because the army brought out different issues. So you do get slight differences with the products. But this shirt, nice and light, it's gonna be lovely. I've got a baggy one again as well because when you get that time of year where it's not cold, not cold, maybe, maybe it's a, Maybe it's autumn. I might actually find that I might put a T-shirt and a jumper underneath this, but I don't want the, the larger smock. So what I might just do, and if I know it's not going to rain, is just put the shirt, the lighter shirt over the top. Maybe have a side bag because I haven't got the lower pockets with the shirt, but I might just wear this as a sort of temperate weather alternative to having the smock and the hood. But the shirts, yeah, as I said, two nice big pockets. Two shoulder pockets in the multi-terrain pattern. Check, always check. I keep saying it, I can't say it enough. There's different issues. If you want shoulder pockets, make sure you check, contact them, make sure that's the one you're gonna get has got them. So these things, they do disappear from certain issues uh, and certain series of garments. So the garments are, are, are evolving, but there's quite a lot around like these. If you want one of these shirts, then yeah, just check if you really want those pockets on the sides, make sure the one that's being sent to you has got them. But yeah, a nice shirt, a nice alternative uh, when it's a bit cooler, and I'm really gonna enjoy detecting in this. The DPM or MTP smock, don't forget, make sure you check exactly what you're getting, think about your sizing, Go super baggy like I have if you want, or a bit closer to the body. You can go longer or shorter. There's quite a few variants. And when you've made your choice and you've got your jacket, either put loads of layers under it for the winter or take the layers off in the nicer weather. Stick all your stuff in all your pockets. Get yourself ready and go detecting.
Right, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. I can certainly see why detectorists who already have army surplus and smocks like this one like them so much. I absolutely love it. I absolutely loved using it in the field. So why don't you go check them out, see if it's something that you think might work for you. Okay, until the next time, folks, good luck, happy hunting, and we'll see you soon.